What's up guys, Black Order, and welcome back to another video, and today we're back on Pro Cycling Manager 2019 for episode number 5 of our Bahrain career mode. Um, in today's episode, we are going to do the Strade Bianche and Tirreno Adriatico. Um, I know that we are before Pyrenees, but we'll make that work. Um, now, before we start, I have a question, uh, and I'll also ask the question in episode 4, which I haven't started recording, but don't worry, it's clear in my head. Do you want me to play some continental races? Or do you want me to stick to the World Tour calendar? I really want your your uh, your input on that in the comments, because I I feel like if I just play the races, like the World Tour races, it's just like, I mean my current like the the season where I just take a team and play the tour. Or do you want me to just stick to World Tour calendar? Or I don't know, like I played the Tour of Randa on my own, was quite fun. Uh, I could play I don't know like the Tour of Sicilia. I'm not saying I'll play every races. But if there's sometimes races or slash tours that I'd like to do, I, I know the tour, the, the tour of the Alps is one of my objectives. Do you want me to like record it, for example? Just let me know in the comments, uh, because that's all up to you. Uh, but yeah, before we uh, move on to that, we'll go uh, to Siena for the Strade Bianche team. We are bringing today Gregor Bolle, Marcel Seberg, Dylan Tunt, Marco Haller, Sonny Colbrelli, Ivan Garcia Cortina, and Matei Mohoric. Um, I'm going to remove Marcel Seberg and bring Demona Caruso instead. Uh, and yeah, for many of these riders, this will be um, like for some of my riders. Sorry, their their first um, race day will uh, will begin. Uh, it's the case of um, well, Demona Caruso first race day today, and then Parinis and Tirena will mark the start of some of my riders. But uh, let's go for 185 kilometers. It is now a cobbled race. Uh, but I know it doesn't matter too much. If it does, though, I've got Sonny Colbrelli and Garcia Cortina ready, and actually Andy Lantons as well, uh, ready to roll in case of, um, of uh, well, in case I need them. It is very much raining today in Siena um, for the Strade Bianche, and that's not going to make uh, our work easy at all today. Um, however, the, what would make what could make my job easy is Dylan Tunes having a plus one and Garcia Cortina having a uh, plus three. So maybe we'll be able to uh, to do something. There's already some attacks. They haven't even waited for kilometer one. Uh, I mean, actually, no, they have. Uh, we've got Thomas Degan, Nicolas Conchi, Davide Villela, Miguel Angel Lopez. Sorry, no, 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 no. I'm no. How is Fabio Felline the leader of Astana when they have Jan Izaguirre and Miguel Angel Lopez in their team? Like. Can someone explain to me how like how this works? Because I'm afraid I don't get it. Is he like allowed in the break because he's got 55 cobbles? We've got Shalunov, Mauro Finetto, Filozzi, Callum Scottson, Sergio Luisano. Uh, all right, actually, yeah, Sergio Luisano, Stefan de Bod, T.J. Van Garderen, Kevin Le Danois, Pavel Polianski, um, Alexandre Genies. Kron and Delio Fernandez. I don't know if the Peloton is chasing them. Withdrawal for Arthur Vichot. Well, that's a solid L for... Uh, oh, there's a crash here. There's a... Yep, it fell extremely high in the Peloton. Uh, around 7th position with Leandro Basso, I think. Uh, or Leonardo Basso. Uh, I'm not seeing anyone from Ineos, though. Oh, there is. It is indeed Leonardo Basso. And he's going to retire. Uh, so that's the end for Basso. Matt Pedersen crashed with Martin Mohoric. Davide Martinelli. And François Bidard, the four of them, will come back eventually in the peloton. Uh, but that's not the kind of start I was looking for. In the meantime, it appears that the breakaway will get a pass. Uh, okay. I mean, should I send Caruso in the break? No. No, let's not do that. Uh, Matei, mate. Matei, I'm not, your, I'm not your friend. Like, if I need you to be at the front of the peloton, you better be. And, oh my god, it's another double crash here. It's a th it's a triple crash for us. What do you mean? Gregabole, Garcia Cortina, and Dylan Tunes are all three on the ground, uh, and it is no withdrawal from my team, which is good. Uh, let's not have Gregabole wait 89. But there's going to be one retirement from someone from uh, Rival Cycling that appears to be we're going to call him Kevin Magnuson, just for the resemblance uh, with the, the the F1 guy. Um, F1 driver, there you go, that's the word I was looking for. Okay, we're very much not where we want to be. Uh, we're 
at the back of the peloton and we better come back but the peloton is pacing uh with this breakaway so it is not making our task easy at all uh we finally have everyone back in the peloton it was extremely hard to do so uh i'm gonna guess that Ineos sent someone no okay so i guess just Ineos st fully stopped attacking um breakaway is finally gonna have some uh some liberty and mainly, we're going to be able to finally be back in this peloton with our uh, Garcia Cortina and the Lanterns. Right, the peloton, uh, well, I mean, Ineos put one... Uh... Oh, actually, it was Mathieu van der Poel who attacked in this uh, sector. I was wondering why the rhythm was this high. And, I mean, if Mathieu van der Poel was the one pacing, well, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, we have sadly lost some of our guys. Uh, Marco Halla and Sonny Colbrelli are dropped alongside 74 riders because no one is pacing in this group. Um, so goodbye all of you lot. Uh, Domenico Caruso has been dropped as well. He's running a few seconds behind. Uh, he's alongside Patrick Conrad and Diego Ulissi. Uh, so might as well rest here. Dylan Tunes um, is here with Matej Mohoric, but uh, Matej Mohoric is completely out of energy. So it'll be uh, Ivan Garcia Cortina being our leader today. Um, just hopefully we can uh, count on Grega Bolle. And I, it'd be if, it'd be great if we could count on uh, on Damiano Caruso. They're not going to follow me if I attack, so I'm going to guess that they're completely out. Why am I pacing 90 with Gregabole? I do not know. It is definitely definitely sorry not what I wanted to do, uh, and I don't feel like I will be able to reach this group. Uh, there's a little downhill section. That's my only wish here with Damiano Caruso, and we are going to mess to miss. Sorry. Um, the, uh, the 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 click where well, we'll be with Matej Mohoric. Okay, so I think it'll be Grigabole, Dylan Tuns and Cortina for us today. Okay, uh, it's not going as well as I had planned, but it is going. I mean, it works both ways. I was expecting to have more riders at this point, but I wasn't expecting to have Garza Cortina on such a good day. Also, attack up front from Nicola Conchi, Miguel Angel Lopez. And TJ Van Garderen. Only three uh, white sectors remaining. There's an, uh, is that acceleration or attack? We'll go with acceleration from the team Ineos once again. Pacing for Michal Kutkowski and uh, Mathieu van der Poel, obviously. I was, like, not watching for a second. And, I mean, Ineos attacked with everyone. <laughs> Which is very not PCM-like. And I'm not saying that they accelerated. They genuinely attacked with everyone. Uh, so we've managed to come back on them. Uh, but we had to use Gregabole's energy. So he's not going to be able to uh, to help us along the way here. Um, Delio Fernandez is still here. Okay, no, he was in the main breakaway. Uh, some decent riders here. I mean, Mathieu van der Poel, obviously. Michal Kutkowski and Garcia Cortina. Um, and Mats Pedersen, the world champion, is there. Okay, 19 kilometers remaining today. There's uh, two sectors remaining, and obviously the, the final kilometer who will be extremely important. Um, okay, let's let's take the the helm of the race because it's currently Andre Amador taking the lead ahead of Kutkowski. What Kutkowski is already in second place. Okay, let's see if Dylan Tunes can uh, drop some of these guys in uh, the further uh, in the next the upcoming sector. Uh, we are catching nearly everyone. There's only Kevin Le Danois and Miguel Angel Lopez up front. Then Miles Scottson. No, Callum Scottson. Yep, Callum Scottson. Ten riders left in the leaders group. Dylan Tunes is going to give all he has in uh, the sector of Le Tolfe. Or Le Tolf, I don't know. Le Tolfe, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with. Um, I mean, if I'm honest, I could I could attack with Garcia Cortina. Let's try to attack. All right, let's try to attack with Van Garcia Cortina. See what happens. Obviously, Mathieu van der Poel is going to follow, but he is a few meters back. He is with Kitkowski. I don't expect Kitkowski to relay him. Uh, however, I expect Yanni Moscon to try to pace. And also, I don't know which rhythm I can hold, I can hold on with Gasa Cortina. Okay. Dylan May, just get some energy back. Obviously, Moscon is going to pace. There we go. I expected that to happen. Um... Can I make sure? Okay, Yanni Moscon is strong. Yanni Moscon is strong today. Okay. 
I may have like ruined my chances of winning today by uh by attacking. Uh, I mean Van der Poel is going to wait, I believe, for the final kilometer. Can can Dylan do something here? Can I like pace for a bit? Yes. All right. Let's let's try to attack again. Let's try to attack again with Van Garsa Cortina. Is there a is there a downhill section here? Yes. Okay. Good. Come on. Let's go even. Come on even. There's going to be a little descent here. Jenny Moscon will pace, but I mean the, there is a there is a gap. There is a gap. The the only worry I really oh he attacked. Mathieu van der Poel attacked. Ah. Can't you just stain the fucking wheels, Mathieu, mate? Please. Uh, yeah, my worry is this. My worry is this climb. Mathieu van der Poel, Kutkowski against Ivan Garcia Cortina. Can we take the win today in Siena? We may be able to, actually. We, we very well might be able to. Huge climb. Huge, huge climb from Ivan Garcia Cortina. And in the descent towards Siena, he's going to raise his hands after winning the down under. Ivan Garcia Cortina adds the Stradi Bianchi to his trophies. This season, he finishes ahead of Mathieu van der Poel. No, Kutkowski, sorry, Mathieu van der Poel. Nelson Oliveira brings him a very nice fourth position for uh, Movistar. Dries van Gessel for Direct Energy. Dylan Tuns, who's done an incredible job today, finishes in sixth position. Yanni Moscon, Miguel Angel Lopez, Mats Pedersen and Sylvain Dillier will complete today's top 10. Huge, huge performance from Ivan Garcia Cortina. I, I'm really happy about that. I really am. I'm really happy with this win, Garcia Cortina, ahead of Kutkowski and Van der Poel. Dylan turned in six. Um, you know what? I believe that, that... I mean, I know this wasn't classified as a really cobbled stage. Um, I mean, the cobbles aren't really that... In, that uh, not impressive, but effective. Um, on, on the riders. I mean, Miguel Angel Lopez finishes in 8th position. Yes, he was in the breakaway, but he still finishes in 8th position with 57 cobbles. Um, but, I don't know, maybe I'll be able to do some some things on the cobbles. I know, I know I've been uh, Ivan Garcia Cortina, obviously, and Dylan Tunes completely died on the envelope, but maybe I'll be able to do something. Following our very good Strade Bianche, uh, we are staying in Italy. And uh, we're going to uh, Lido di Camere for the first stage of Tirreno Adriatico, a 21 kilometer team time trial between Lido di Camere and L or around Lido di Camere. The team we are bringing today is as follows Domino Caruso, Santiago Buitrago, Wout Pools, Sonny Colbrelli, Ivan Garcia Cortina, Matei Mohoric, and Phil Barhaus. Uh, I could Potentially have Scott Davis in the lineup. I'm still uh, debating that. Is it, I mean, it is a team time trial. Uh, if I like, I could remove. Well, I, I don't want to remove Buitrago though, because he's Colombian champion, and I want him to like showcase his jersey. Uh, I want Matty Morris and Garza Cortina to be in shape for the classics. I need him to. I need them to rise today. Nope, Scott Davis will not take part of the Tirreno in the Tirreno. And uh, enough talking. More racing. Alright, uh, we are going to start our time trial. I believe we are the last team. Uh, yep, we are. Okay, so let's completely not watch at the uh, current table uh, or rankings because Ineos definitely hasn't walked on everybody else. Uh, and let's concentrate or let's focus on, uh, on our work today because we have work to do. Uh, We'll go 22, 22, 18, nothing, uh, a solid 18 as well for you, mate. Uh, and, uh, and ooh, I'll go f six seconds with Buitrago, and we'll go eight seconds with Phil Bauhaus. Okay, I know usually on during time trials, I take a look at all the teams, uh, but I didn't want to, because, uh, no, we're not a final team to go. We're actually former to last, I believe, uh, is Alpes in Phoenix. The last uh, team... Nope, they're not. Okay, so I will completely shut up. Alright, uh, let's just take a look at the start list in the classic way. Alpes in Phoenix, they have Mathieu van der Poel. That's about everything they'll have the entire season. De Conange, they have Remco van der Poel, obviously. Uh, but I mean, that's about it. Fulsang is leading Astana. Roglic uh, is going to be the only leader for Jumbo Visma. He'll most likely feel alone here. Niels Polit for uh, Israel, uh, Ron Dennis for Ineos. 
Am I the only one not seeing really good mountain leaders? I mean, I'm seeing Rafa Maika for Bora, Romain Bardet, eventually, for uh, Jeu de Zer. That's not great, is it? Like, there's that Martin for Israel, I hadn't seen him. And of course, I completely forgot that was Primoz Roglic. But I could have expected a much tougher lineup here. Okay. Uh, at the intermediate, we are currently 6th, 17 seconds behind Ineos. Wait, CCC are doing a madness. They do have Patrick Bevin and Joseph Sani. But they're doing a madness. Uh, I'd say we're not doing too bad. Was that a, yeah, that was the final team to go. Um, the only thing I'm like happy about, I've got Caruso and Whirlpools on uh, good fitness for this tour. So maybe we can counteract the fact that they're not the best by having them in a good fitness. I don't know. Uh, that's that's not up to me. Uh, but we have five kilometers left in this time trial before uh, arriving in Lido di Camaiore. CCC are still doing a madness. Uh, let me uh, just change one thing. Bauhaus, Buitrago, um, Cold Relay. You're not going to relay anymore. It's just going to be Caruso, Moroberg, Garza, Cortina and Wokepools because they are the best uh, in the team. Come on. It looks like Phil Bauhaus has done nothing. Like, <laughs> he has done nothing. Caruso is going to get dropped, uh, I believe so. And that's not ideal because he's going to block everybody else, for fuck's sake. So even if we do finish well, Caruso is going to destroy our time. For fuck's sake, why couldn't Whirlpool's Butrago, no, Bauhaus, Butrago and Colbert ever take them? Is it because, like, I put them on not relay? If so, I'm really triggered. Right, you know, Sween wins. Uh, we finish a minute behind. I'm sad because of the Caruso incident. I'm not gonna lie. Yenimos can takes the lead. Uh, blah blah blah. Great. Buongiorno a tutti. And yeah, the second stage of the Tirreno Adriatico. Uh, my my Italian knowledge is extremely limited. Uh, I've got Buongiorno tutti, grande macchina, and grazie ragazzi. So half of it comes from Sebastian Vettel, and the other part comes from. The Giro. Um, anyway, we've got White Bulls, who's got a plus four today. Uh, extremely good, uh, considering the finish of today's stage in uh, Pomaranche. Garza Cortina is not having the best day of his career. Um, Garuso, Caruso, sorry, will be able to uh, help. Phil Bauhaus doesn't really need him. Um, the same applies to Sonny Colbert. We're going to send Santiago Buitrago in the breakaway as soon as possible. And uh, yeah. I don't feel like there's a lot of things that I'm expecting here today. Or at least not until the finish. All right, there's uh, four kilometers, actually five kilometers until the summit of uh, the uh, Castellina Maritima. And uh, I mean, I have to say, there has been no breakaways. Uh, every time someone tried to attack, the person was always, always catching him. Uh, so I reckon what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm just going to like either i don't know if it's an attack from Alex. no it can't be an attack from alex dowsett no it can't be so uh i'm gonna fight for the points with world pulse i believe that he's the wise choice he is definitely someone that could be fighting for the classification um at the end of this tour so yeah well pulse will try and uh, get the um five points at the castellina maritima uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get uh, the uh, same amount of points at the Montecatini Val di Cecina. No signs of any attacks as of right now. Uh, and there will not be any of them. Well, Pulse doesn't get jumped on the line by Alvaro Hood. Good. Uh, right, we're still waiting for, uh, I don't know, a breakaway. There's 93 kilometers to go. So obviously still some chances for uh, the peloton to make a move. But yeah. Mihal Kutkowski has crashed, uh, he's being awaited by Owen Dahl, but there is something else, uh, and I believe it is worth mentioning. Actually, okay, well, it's not worth mentioning anymore because everyone com uh, came back in the peloton, but a group of 11 riders had left everyone uh, with, like, Matt Pedersen, Arnaud Demar, um, Andre Graypool, Mathieu van der Poel, like, all the uh, favorites for today's stage. Or actually, all the sprinters uh, had decided to, to I don't know, to go in the break, uh, have some fun, uh, and that gap was over two minutes, so it was kind of scary. 
but eventually we managed to come back. I'm gonna guess that it's going to be a, a similar thing for Mihal Kietkowski as soon as he um, makes his return in the peloton. I mean, I'm already. I'm gonna guess he's there. Yeah, he's at the at the very uh, at the tail end of the peloton, but he's there uh, alongside uh, Luca Vakerman, Fabio Sabatini, and um, Elia Viviani's brother. 42 kilometers remaining. We've got 10 points in the mountain classification with World Pools. I don't know if there is any points to take. There is 15 points to take today in Pomar in Pomaranche. So, I mean, my result in Pomaranche will decide whether I get the jersey or not. Obviously, a win would be huge for me. Uh, not only, I mean, it would be nice, uh, but it would put World Pools on 25 points. And it's another big crash involving... Mr. Romain Bardet, the leader of ag 2 is out of the running today uh, for this win. He's still obviously in the race, uh, but he's not going to be able to fight for the win and most likely will lose any chances of winning the 2019, uh, 2020 actually, Tirreno Adriatico. 13 kilometers remaining until um, we reach Pomaranche. All right. We have started the climb. Uh, it's the um, Dukonak Quick Step Team of Remco Evenepoel. And I think think Bob Jungles, who is uh, taking charge of the peloton. Here goes Davide Ballerini with Yves Lampard. Fernando Guviria is already in third position with Alvaro Hudge. I don't know if De Conanc wants to win um, for like Evenepoel slash Jungles uh, or if they want to win with Alvaro Hudge. But uh, they are, they're, gonna have, they're going to have to make a decision extremely quickly here. Um, actually, they may want to try and win with Yves Lampard. They, uh, that might be one of their issues. One of their ideas is attack. Attack here from Davide Formolo. Okay, not anymore. He stopped. Um, where are my sprinters? Not in a good position. Great. Brilliant. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to accelerate here with Damiano Caruso. Trying to find a gap uh, to send Wopult towards a, a potential W. Sonny Colbelli is way too far down the pack in order to try and, uh, and come back. One kilometer to go. Damiano Caruso starts his effort with Wopuls in his wheel. There goes Wopuls. Can he do something today in Pomaranche? Can we take the win? Or is it going to be a win for Dukan and Quickstep with uh, Bob Jungles? Wopuls across the line is going to take an easy, easy W ahead of Bob Jungles. Mihal Kutkowski, who despite his crash, still managed to come back and uh, grab a third position. Primoz Roglic, Philippe, Dan Martinez, Mathieu Van der Poel, Mathieu Trentin, Jdenek Stibar, Jakob Pulsang, and Patrick Bevan complete today's top 10. But it's a great day for Whirlpools, uh, who not only takes the win, but he also takes the Polkadot jersey ahead of literally everyone as he's taken all of the available points today. All right, no gaps uh, until P44. So, I mean, I'm, I'm only dropping like the likes of Roman Krozega. Um, I saw... Um, What's his name? Remco Venepoel is there. I'm going to guess Romain Barley is going to be here as well. Uh, there he is. He is losing 2 minutes 27. But yeah, we take the win today. Uh, good start to the Tirreno. What Pulse has always liked uh, this race. In the GC, we are still way down the order. 33rd uh, behind Mihal Kutkowski, who takes the leading jersey of the Tirreno Atico today. Ahead of the stage between Pomarance and Foligno. Stage, stage three of this Tirreno, following yesterday's a very good episode. Uh, no, no episode. A uh, very good race in um, between, I think, Foligno and Pomaranche. Uh, actually, no, because Foligno Pomaranche is today. I can't remember what was the stage yesterday. But uh, today we have 220 kilometers on our hands, a, a qualified sprint stage. Uh, we have Phil Bahaus, who will be uh, competing for the W today. Who the fuck is that? That's Ryan Gibbons. Okay, uh, there'll need to be uh, a South African church. Shirt, sorry, not church. Shirt made for um, for NCT in the in the near future. But yeah, we'll have to sprint uh, with uh, either Ivan Garcia Cortina or uh, Phil Bauhaus. And uh, yeah, I mean, Whirlpools will stay in the peloton. Obviously, um, there is 20 points to be taken, actually. Nope, 10. Only 10 points to be taken today. So that's even uh, better for what... I mean, I don't really have to worry about anything today. And I just forgot that my sprinter is Senegal Brelli. So I'm not going to sprint for Phil Bauhaus, not going to sprint for Ivan Garza Cortina. We're sprinting f for Senegal Brelli. Alright, there is just uh, under 20 kilometers to go, and uh, the, the peloton is going on a mad one. Uh, and I can't exactly figure out why, uh, but there is 
like Gaviria is is here. Uh, so sadly called Brelly isn't. Uh, so we're gonna have to make our train here to come back. I mean, even what pulls his drops. Uh, so we've uh, we have some work to do here with um with our guys. Uh, 20, uh, 21 man group at the front. Um, you've got Matt Pedersen. I'm pretty sure there is Fernando Gaviria that I saw somewhere. Uh, at least I believe I saw him somewhere. Okay, maybe not. Uh, but the good thing, everyone's gonna come back. Alright, that was just um, a, a scary moment for nothing. Uh, meanwhile, we're not gonna stop our train because we're approaching the finish line. Caruso is going to lead uh, Mohoric. Uh, actually, you can slow down a bit, big man. Uh, I need Garza Cortina to, uh, to do some work at the front. If we could drop, like, genuinely drop this, the, the group, like, this technically peloton, that could be nice. Not sure we will be able to do so, but that would be a, that would be a good thing. Uh, we're gonna drop, uh, we're gonna have Cortina in the train, there we go. Alright, Caruso, Mohoric, Garza Cortina, Colbrelli, and Work Pulse. That is uh, what we're going to roll with uh, for this sprint. And there is, once again, a group dropped. Uh, Mathieu van der Poel is there. Miral Kutkowski, the leader of the Tirana Adresico, has been dropped. But they're going to come back. Uh, I feel like it's just going to be a, a similar case until uh, until the end. And it go, it's going to break once again around, uh, around Ryan Gibbons. And now it's going to break here. Yeah, I don't feel we'll, uh, we'll ever have a... An actual solid, solid peloton. Um, all right, let's change the um, guy who paces for us. We're gonna have work pulled this time at the front uh, because Damiano Caruso has finished his work. Who's in my will? We've got Gaviria, Rene Veganizer, Arno Demar, Matteo Trentin, Jacomo Nizzolo, Matteo Moschetti, and Simone Consoni. Okay, it's good, it could be better. There goes Matteo Mohoric with Garza Cortina. And Sonny Coldwelly in the wheel. We're going to start the sprint of Garza Cortina right now. Rene Wigan is currently the one in the lead. There goes Sonny Coldwelly. Oh, that's very far from the line, actually. Fuck me. Uh, and we're going to we're gonna get jumped by Primoz Roglic. What? Roglic has pulled the May. He's done what I did with Tom Dumoulin across my entire two seasons with, uh, with Sunweb. He won a sprint against the sprinters. Madness. Uh, well, 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 well. Uh, I don't really know what to say. It's a win for Roglic out of Coldwelly, Trentin, Cortina, Nizolo, Kutkowski, Fulsang, uh, sorry, Jungle, Fulsang, Dennis, and Lampard. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of speechless. I just now understand what it feels to be a, a sprinter and losing to a GC leader. Well, it was a surprising win today in Foligno for Primoz Roglic, ahead of, uh, of of good sprinters. Um, now, is there anyone dropped? There's a group seven minutes behind, but I'm going to guess down near 123rd position. So no one interesting. Uh, that's a shame they didn't count the actual gaps. There's four riders out of time. That's that's massive for a sprint stage. Uh, actually, there's a group 431 as well. Uh, but yeah, no one interesting. It's a shame, because there were some real gaps uh, in this stage. But uh, we'll move to Foligno Fossombrane for the fourth stage of this uh, Tirreno Artico. Alright, Foligno Fossombrane, fourth stage uh, of this Tirreno. And, um, I mean, it is an interesting stage. It is long. I mean, it's the Tirreno stage. But uh, the end is rather hilly. And there's two um, Orcateri climbs just before the line. So... I'm thinking that White Bulls may have a chance to uh, a card to play here today. Um, we're going to send someone in the breakaway because that's what we do. Um, we'll send Santiago Buitrago. There we go. Good old uh, Colombian champion goes in at the break. He's followed by Roman Bardet. There's a Wayne Dole, Michael Nieve, Sabatini, Villela, Marginski, Gvadze, Gustavo Carboni, Kilrainen. Uh, okay, yeah, no, they're not all going to, uh, to go in the break. Actually, I'm not even sure if Buitrago will be allowed to go. Uh, I mean, Buitrago will, what's for sure. Roman Bardet will not. At least, he fucking... I fucking hope not, because if he's in the break, my hopes of, like, taking KO win points are dead. All right, it took me some time, but I finally managed to join the breakaway. Uh, the, the, the yellow situation uh, with Buitrago is absolutely horrendous. But there is a breakaway with Davide Villela, Marginski, Roman Bardet, Eduardo Zardini, Buitrago that composes half the breakaway. The other half 
is Aqua Sapo. No, Antonio Gocatoli. We've got Gvarzi, Jonathan Restrepo, Roman Pelo. No, Simon Pelo, sorry. Um, Nicolo Bagioli. And Viel. They were pacing so hard on the peloton that they dropped everyone in the group. And they've joined the breakaway. I have rarely seen that. I mean, actually, I have never seen that on PCM. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess that's the first to have to, uh, to anything. Meanwhile, Butrago is uh, recovering. Uh, it was a long pursuit for him. But the Colombian champion is well and surely at the front of the race. Alright, uh, 70 km remaining. Uh, we've crossed the first KOM. Roman Bardet has destroyed every single one of us. I mean, not that I'm surprised by it, but it was just not very nice from Romain to destroy his mates with 80 kilometers to go. I did not enjoy that. I felt, I felt uh, betrayed by Romain. Like as a Frenchman, I felt like we had a, a sort of alliance or something. But no, uh, he's just attacking, and he has no respect for the the the. Um, the health and uh, the, 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 the quality of, uh, of Santiago Butrago's muscles. And this is outrageous from Romain. So I hope that he gets a puncture in the uh, next climb. Yeah, I don't want to be too mean because my karma is a bit, but I beg. Right, people need to stop falling. Like, this is a madness. Everyone is crashing. And I don't get it. Like, it, it's a climb. Why do you fall in the climb? Like, if you fall in a descent, I get it. But you're falling in a climb. So no, you're not Lance Armstrong, mate. Stop it. Buitrago is absolutely done for. Thank you, Romain, for being such a sport. I hate you. And everything you stand for. Might be a bit too much, sorry. Uh, but no, uh, coming back on like the crashing situation, people really need to get a grip, because... This is go like this is mad. There's been three retirements, I, th I believe. Um, I know there was Castroviero at one point. There was Jorge Arcas. Um, I think someone else uh, is gone, but I can't really remember who. Um, a lot of GC leaders have uh, tasted the uh, Italian uh, cement. I guess. I guess I can say cement uh, or just the ground in it, like concrete. There you go, that's what I was looking for. Uh, but there's 50 kilometers remaining. We have lost Ivan Garcia Cortina, which is uh, not great. I'm not gonna lie, I would have liked to have him until the end. Um, but we still have uh, Guillermo Caruso and Wopuls. So, uh, hashtag no biggie. 21 kilometers remaining before reaching Fossombrone, and there is still a breakaway that's uh, currently two minutes in the lead. And to my surprise, it is not Omar Bardet, it is Jonathan Restrepo. I guess having 40 mates in the break kind of helps. Uh, but yeah, we've got Restrepo, 40 seconds ahead of Romain Bardet, who's himself a minute ahead of Eduardo Zordi, who's navigating 20 seconds uh, over, uh, ahead of the peloton. But we are going to enter the, the two climbs that appeared to be, uh, I mean, crucial for today's stage. Why is Zardi... Okay, I thought Zardini was turning left and Bardet was going, like, straight, which I didn't understand the point of it, but why not? Maybe it was, like, for, for, for the fun. Um, Matej Moric is going to lead our team in uh, the uh, climb of Cappuccini, oh, uh, which is not a type of coffee, at least I don't think it is, uh, and we are going to try and catch our first Romain Bardet attack, okay, no, it's not an attack, it's just Niels Polit going crazy, uh, there we go, he's going to stop now, thank you Niels for uh, your input on uh, today's race, that was uh, crucial. Damino Caruso will take the relay, and this time it's going to be a uh, much much tougher for the rest of the peloton than when it was Matej Maric, uh, because even Wopuls is struggling. We're going to catch Jonathan Restrepo. Uh, some very, very tough percentages. Uh, do I stop uh, Caruso and get the points with Wopuls? Absolutely. Uh, it did not work. So that's great. 30 riders in this group. Is genuinely no one going to take the pace? Like, no one will ride here. Come on. Ineos, mate, you've got 17 riders in the first group. Like, do you want... What, what do you want? Lutsenko has been dropped. Roman Bardet, obviously, has been dropped. 
Uh, I could come back with Mr. Moritz, but I don't really feel like I want to. Um, actually, we're still going to have him to base. Uh, okay, who's basing? Is it? Wait, wait, wait. So Ineos doesn't want to base, but now they're leading the peloton with Mihal Kikoski, who's the leader of the GC. It does not make sense to me. Uh, okay, Moritz and Lutsenko can have fun now. Nine kilometers left. Uh, and there is one more climb of the uh, Cappuccini. Matei Moritz is going to make his comeback. So I guess I'm going to have to pace with Matei. Uh, and I'm fi it's fine by me because it's something I don't mind doing. Uh, all right. 33 kilometers, no, 33 riders left in the first group. Uh, we've taken the same as the previous climb and we've started again. But this time we're not going to make uh, any gifts. We're going to pace and uh, we're going to pace to win. There goes the Mono Caruso now. Nine, pacing 96 kilometers remaining. Who's in my wheel? Yoni Zagire. Is he going to hold on? Most likely. Uh, but it is a good day for the Mino Caruso, so you never know. Uh, Whirlpool's struggling to uh, stay in the wheel. Greg Van Avermaet already uh, jumping on the saddle there. 400 meters until the summit of the Cappuccini. I'm not going to stop for Whirlpool set today. I don't really care. Like He's still going to get points. Uh, that's going to be 15. So that's 30 points for Caruso. 45 for Whirlpool's decent starting at the descent or the downhill portion this time. Towards um, Fossombrone, 24 riders. Left in contention for the W. Greg Van Avermaet is uh, well and truly placed. And that is uh, not something I wanted to see. Caruso is not going to drop anyone in the descent. Which is something I would have liked to see. Uh, 2.1 km left. There goes Domino Caruso's effort. Whirlpool's in the wheel. Uh, sadly not directly in the wheel. But somewhere in the wheel. We do have a, a, little, a little gap. With, um, with like Greg Van Avermaet and so on. And can we win? Yes, indeed, we will. It's going to be an A1-2. Yeah. Yeah, go on. Go on, then. 1-2 for Bahrain Merida. Today in Fossum Brown, Gamino Caruso wins ahead of Whirlpools. Greg Van Avermaet, Davide Formolo, Yoni Zagiri, Jakob Fulsang, Bob Jungles, Primus Roglic, Dan Martinez, and Patrick Conrad. We've done well. We've done very well today. I'm proud of my boys. Get in. 1-2 for Bahrain McLaren. Hey, big up Bahrain McLaren, mate. Because we've been shit on the time trail. And I feel like we could have been much better on the team time trial because of Domino Caruso. Um, but apart from that, we've had a great race. We've won stage two. We were second yesterday. We win today with a 1-2. Domino Caruso has done a madness. Um, Points-wise, like he gets 30 points. Well, mountain-wise, that's plus 50 today for us. Uh, what does that mean GC-wise? Kutkowski is still the leader of Ineos. Actually, no, there's one thing I had to check. Before, who withdrew from the race? Was it only Castroviero and Jorgarcas? Oh, it was only two of them. Col oh, Colbrillian and Bauhaus finished former to last. And penultimate. Decent. Nice. Uh, Alright, GC-wise, Kutkowski, Moscona, Medal, Dennis. So still the team Ineos. Then we've got uh, a mix of CCC and Jumbo Visma. Uh, Whirlpools is now 17th. Uh, 47 seconds behind the lead. Domino Caruso is 19th. 53 seconds behind the lead. Points-wise... Whirlpools and Famous Roglic are tied uh, for the uh, points classification. And we are easily in the lead in the mountain classification. 45 points for Whirlpools ahead of Damone Caruso, 31. And the first non Bahrain McLaren rider is Jonathan Restrepo in third place with only 11 points. So we're doing great on this side. Uh, best rider is Dan Martinez. I had no one really to fight in this classification. Uh, so I don't really care. And the best team is the team... Ineos, as we now move towards Colli Almetauro uh, Recanati for 180 kilometers. Following our three very good races and uh, yesterday's win with the... Uh, wait, was it yesterday's win? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was, of course it was. With Damien Canaruso, we are uh, heading for 177 kilometers today between Colli Almetauro and Recanati. Uh... It is going to be a fun stage, I believe. Uh, similar to yesterday's finish. Actually, no, not at all. Similar to the finish three days, three stages ago, uh, which was won by White Bulls. Hopefully, we can make this uh, a common or a usual thing uh, that we win when uh, when White Bulls is on the road. And yeah, uh, I don't really know what to say uh, except that we're not going to send anyone in the break, and may uh, may the best rider from Bayern Merida wins, Baron McLaren. Shit, I swear I'm going to say this so many times. My bad. I apologize on behalf of my tongue.
All right, it's quite weird because we have now we're going to cross the uh, climb of uh, Reconetti for the third time today. The first climb, first category climb. Second time we cross it, it's a first category climb. Logical. So why the fuck is the third one uh, uh, our category? Like, how? Like, like what, 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 where? Nah, but nah, nah, nah. I don't get it. I, I, I need an explanation. I'm, I'm gonna need some words. Like, I'm gonna need it. I'm going to need uh, a sequence of words pulled together, making this a sentence, explaining as to why the fuck the climbs change difficulties. Like, is it because they've crossed it three times now, so it's harder on the legs? Which, I mean, most likely is. But it's not a reason, in it? It just isn't. Uh, Colbert is having a mare at the back. Uh, same for Buitrago and Phil Bauhaus. Meanwhile, we still have uh, four guys. Matteo Moritz and even Garcia Cortina are... Struggling is the word I'd, I'd choose. Uh, but yeah, I. Th the good thing is, what pulls Caruso? Desilea. Eleven kilometers until uh, we uh, arrive in our final destination of Recanati. Uh, we're pacing slightly ahead um, with uh, what pulls and Demino Caruso. I wonder what happens if I put a slight attack, like just a little attack, to see what happen. Would what, what would happen? Does everyone follow? Uh, oh, little break after Lorenz de Plus here. Yeah. But yeah, I believe that genuinely everyone would follow. None riders in the leading group, uh, but this group will come back eventually. There we go. Okay. Uh, that was a first dagger for nothing. Uh, it was a, a, a dagger hit uh, in the water. Uh, that would be the, di the direct French translation for, uh, or the direct translation for a French saying. Um, which is un coup d'épée dans l'eau, if you're French in it, you get that. Alright, um, just over 5 kilometers remaining. We're going to attack the climb extremely soon. Uh, I don't want to get a coat napping or anything, because I don't think that I will have a... But I mean, if I, if I get coat napping, I'm done for. I don't think I'll have a chance to uh, recover or replace myself. Uh, so here goes nothing. We're in the climb of Recanati. And uh, the winner of Vierge Bastogne 2018, Bob Jungles pacing. We have Isa Guiré on, on uh, the side. We've got Jacob Fulsang, Lorenz de Plus, Miral Kutkowski. All of the big names are here. Domino Caruso is uh, still doing uh, solid work here. We're going to reduce his rhythm because I don't want to destroy what pulls too much. Uh, but I believe that I'm going to have to take uh, matters in my own hands. Otherwise, I'm going to get dropped here. I feel like I'm going to get dropped by a, by a Primoz Roglic, Jakob Fulsang. Actually, this group of four, there is a, a slight group that seems to, uh, well, get created. Uh, I'm not going to be the one able to bridge that gap. Uh, and the win today will be for Bob Jungels uh, in Recanati ahead of Primoz, no, ahead of uh, Kutkowski, Roglic, Fulsang. Dennis Pouls, Conrad, Dan Martinez, Rafa Maika, Mathieu van der Poel, Romain Bardet, and then Dan Martin and Damino Caruso to round up the top 10. It's my first race on this Tirreno that I do not finish on the podium, uh, and it is rather disappointing. Alright, we lose 13 seconds on uh, today's winner, Bob Jungles. Uh, am I disappointed? Yes. Could I have done better? Honestly, probably not, if I'm being honest. I feel like there is, I mean, World Pulse is not on the level of full song. Roglic, Kutkowski, or Jungles. Uh, and it showed today. It showed uh, towards uh, Recanate. GC wise, Wapuls jumps to 8th position, 106 behind uh, Mihal Kutkowski. It's going to be uh, an interesting end. I think tomorrow is a sprint. Okay, so it's not going to be an interesting end because there is now one race, uh, one stage left uh, with that could actually create gaps. And it's a time trial. Uh, is there anyone that could like genuinely smash me? I feel like I could probably fight with all these guys here. Yeah. I think I could overtake Rafa Maika, if I'm honest. If I can have a good day. Uh, Caruso could potentially overtake Mathieu van der Poel. But then again, it's Mathieu van der Poel, so can I really overtake him? I don't think so. Uh, and yeah, alright. Uh, next up, it's a sprint stage between Matelica and Ressi. Penultimate stage of this uh, Tirreno Ratico. A sprint stage today uh, awaiting the riders 190 kilometers between Matelica and Ressi. Um... I mean, it's a sprint. There is no other way around it. Uh, we'll try to sprint for Sonny Colbrelli. 
don't know why in case uh, I put uh, the emphasis on Call of Duty that much, but who, who really gives a shit? Uh, we're going to send Boot Dragon to Breakaway alongside Jonathan Restrepo as Bjorn Graf Anderson, someone that I know quite well for having him in my team last season. And then Gasparotto, Benoit Cosnefroy is also here. Jasper De Bust, Victor Albanese or Vincenzo Albanese. Sounds, sounds more Italian to say Vincenzo, but... I don't know, maybe, maybe his first name is like Viking or something. Boutrago has been caught up though, uh, and that reminds me that I may not want to send him in the break. Uh, because he is a shit sprinter. Let's send Matej Mohoric instead. I just want to check one guy, uh, one name. Uh, Team Bardiani. No, Bardiani I said. Vincenzo, Vincenzo Albanese. So he is indeed your basic Italian bitch. Okay, uh, breakaway attempt number two. Matej Mohoric, Yuri Olman, Benoît Cosnefroy, Jasper Debus, Matteo Busato, Vincenzo Albanese, don't tell me that's whatever. Okay, it's Lawrence Nazen, Kilrainen, and Stan De Wulf. Exactly 10 kilometers left in this uh, sixth stage of the Tirreno Adriatico. We are currently leading the peloton with uh, Domino Caruso. We're slightly going to reduce our rhythm because we want him to, uh, I mean, be there until at, at least like four kilometers where I might be able to take the the, the relay with Whirlpools if I really want to. Although I, I don't really want to, if I'm honest. Uh, Garza Cortina, Bauhaus called ready in the wheel. I could have sprinted for um, for Bauhaus today. It is a thing that still goes in my head right now, and I might make a switch uh, rather sooner than later. I don't know. Uh, no, we're, 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 sti we're sticking with Colbrelli. Uh, I forgot to use the gel, which is uh, really smart on my side here. Alright, there goes Garza Cortina. Uh, we're going to make sure that he takes the corner in first place. Indeed, he does. There goes this final sprint. Final sprint of this uh, Tirreno Adratico. 1.9 kilometers to go. There goes Phil Bauhaus. Rudy Castelli, he's there. Um, Colbrelli going to take this left hander and sprint until. The line, can we hold on to the win? No, we will not. The win today for Fernando Gaviria or Rene Wigan comes back extremely quickly. Gaviria has, rose, uh, has risen his hands. The win, Fernando Gaviria just off the line ahead of Rene Wigan and Sonny Colbrelli. But that was extremely close. Extremely close in favour of, um, of Fernando Gaviria. Who narrowly, narrowly took the fattest L. Of 2020, Whirlpool's finishing in fifth position, Colbrelli in third. Uh, I believe that. Wait, actually, uh, I've got six points. If I don't know, because maybe Jungle's got three points. There could be a a two-way tie. Wait, no. No, no, Bob Jungle's. I think Bob Jungle's takes the lead in the in the point classification. I went for Gaviria, uh, but what really uh, interests me here. Yep, Bobby Ingalls takes the lead in the point certification ahead of Wopols and Primoz Roglic. It's all uh, to be played for tomorrow. Uh, Wopols, did I? Did, did something happen? Like, did Caruso got dropped? Oh, Caruso lost a minute. Nice. And Roglic lost 30 seconds? How the fuck is that happened then? Mad. Because I was like, Daniel Martinez was not third, and I was not seventh, and I was not twelfth. Okay. I didn't see it. I did not see it, but nice. Alright, uh, it's going to make for a very interesting time trial. Uh, I mean, Kudkowski's got the W, but there's a fight for the third place between Ryan Dennis, Primoz Roglic, and poor Daniel Martinez. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an L for Utah, son. It's going to be an L. All right, I, I think I probably should have, like, taken a look at Cold Brady's and Phil Bauhaus' time, but was there even, like, was there really a, a need, if I'm honest? Uh, currently leading in San Benito del Tronto is Alex Dowsett. He's currently 20 seconds ahead of Matt Pedersen, 22 seconds ahead of Ryan Mullen. Very good time uh, from uh, the uh, British time trial champion for uh, Espanola Startup Nation. We've got Santiago Buitrago soon uh, to cross L line. There he goes. 104 behind uh, our highest rated, uh, sorry, our highest placed rather is Sonny Colbrelli. He's currently navigating a 23 
in 23rd position, my bad, 55 seconds behind Alex Dowsett. I physically cannot English today, but uh, as long as work pulls can time trial, I'm fine. And as Matej Mohoric takes, uh, takes on the road, we have a new leader in San Benito del Tronto. He's Belgian, he rides for the new NTT team, and it is none other than European time trial champion, or former European time trial champion, Victor Camponart. He's 10 seconds ahead of Alex Dowsett, who himself is 2 seconds ahead of two riders, being Remco Venepoel, the current European champion, and, Yves, uh, and Stefan Kung, sorry, the, uh, the third of... Um, the uh, last wait yeah he was third of the uh no wait, is he second no he was second wait no he was wait what the fuck my brain um it was mass pedersen ahead of yeah it was a trenton and, and king so for third place of last year's uh world championships in uh fourth place currently in the sound trial gasa Cortina crosses the line 103 behind victor campanats not bad um considering he is everything but a time trialist I'm uh, expecting a bit more from Matej Mohoric, uh, possibly an entry in the uh, in the twenty in the top twenty here. Doesn't look uh, like it's gonna happen if we take a look at his intermediates. Uh, but I'm uh, hoping for a, a show of strength on the second half. Matej Mohoric, twenty fourth, forty five seconds behind Mats. Oh, Patrick Bevin across the line, sixth, seventeen seconds behind Victor Campanat. Zoran Kapanzen, who was second at the first intermediate. Four seconds behind Campanarts takes third place in San Benito del Tronto. Huge, huge time trial, I think, for Campanarts. The only two riders that I could see potentially beating him are Rondonis and Primoz Roglic, and they'll leave in fifth and fourth position. Dominic Cruz on the way. Hopefully for a good time trial. He sadly lost a minute yesterday, which is not something I had seen, but, I mean, we'll, we'll have to do with it. Um... Apart from that, yeah, go, go, good luck, son. Have fun. Uh, just, yeah, do well. What Paul's, though, is going to be leaving in two positions. Uh, it's not a great day for what Paul's, especially, especially now that he's not feeling well. Uh, I received that mail this morning. Uh, honestly, one of the saddest things that I've ever had to read on PCM. I was devastated when I saw uh, the headlines. But yeah, uh, I'm just hoping that he, uh, that he does well. In today's time trial. It's not great knowing that I wanted to overtake Rafa Maika. Not great considering that, I mean, there is less than 10 seconds between P6 and P9. But we'll have to deal with that. Uh, Caruso the, crossing the line in just 100 meters. There he goes across the line. 13th, 32 seconds behind Victor Campanart. I'd call that a decent effort from uh, Mr. Uh, what's his name? Caruso. Whipples. Alright, so he is still ahead of Fulsang and Conrad. And he is also ahead of Rafa Maika. Okay, I might be able to, to, to take this. The gap was two seconds in the DC and at the current intermediate, the gap is two seconds in favor of Whipples. Ron Denis, though, is having a lot of fun. So is Primoz Roglic. Daniel Martinez. Wow! Dan Martinez is three seconds behind Ron Dennis. What world are we living in? Uh, what pulls 20 seconds, 39 seconds behind Ron, uh, behind uh, Victor Campanart. Nice. Micah, 52, so we'll overtake him. Ron Dennis takes first place. I'm absolutely in shock here. I, I mean, what? Primoz Rogate across the line behind Ron Dennis. I mean... Technically speaking, Dan Martinez should be like behind a lot of riders, but he's only three seconds behind Primoz Roglic. What the fuck does that mean for the GC? Dan Martinez might keep his position over Primoz Roglic. Okay, Bob Jungles, 34 seconds behind. Mihai Kutkowski is going to be a bit behind as well, but I don't really think that he cares a lot here because he has won the 2020 Tirreno Adriatico. There we go, we're on the next camp arts, Roglic, Martinez. Uh, GC wise, Primoz Roglic jumps Martinez for one little second run. This nearly jumped Bob Jungles actually. Well, Paul uh, goes up to sixth position. Michael Conrad, uh, Fulsang and Dupuis complete the top 10. Well, Paul wins the best climber classification. Primoz Roglic wins the point classification ahead of Jungles and Well, Paul's. The Martinez is the best rider and the best team is the team Ineos ahead of Brian McLaren. Like on Paranis. 
Right, uh, that's it for today's episode. Um, I mean, I would have liked to see a bit more from uh, from Mo today, if I'm honest. But he's not feeling well, uh, and the five riders ahead of me, except like Dan Martinez, are all much better than I am in time trial. I'd say, I mean, it's it's a good two runner for me. Uh, two wins, a distinctive jersey, a sixth place in the GC. I will happily, happily take that. Uh, but if you've enjoyed today's episode, please do leave a like down below. That would really mean a lot to me. Um, please tell me in the comments if you want me to do some continental races. Uh, that is up to you. Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll do whatever you asked me to do. Which is not, it's something I kind of regret saying now. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you uh, in the very near future for the next episode of the Bind Career Mode. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Blackwell. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, guys. And goodbye. Pull up, pull up in the gold, I'm bleeding. What am all the money feeding? I don't want to go bombi. Them, I don't know what I do when I go from bleeding. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bear. Snapping with a phone and dab. I'll stop a man with a duster. Put him in a drip and sip, love buster.